can we revise please everyone here we are done with anticoagulants another five minutes we are revising whatever we have read in the last one hour complete chapter anticoagulant everyone on the screen everyone so this is a classification of anticoagulant people we are done with anticoagulant how many type of anticoagulants are there you all can see we are having two type of anticoagulants oral anticoagulant and parental anticoagulant the root is different oral anticoagulant is given orally via tablet parental anticoagulant is given parenterally via subcutaneous injection or an emergency iv injection but not intramuscular injection so based on the route of administration we are dividing them in two category oral and parenteral Oral is further divided into three categories, coumarin derivative, direct an inhibitor and direct two inhibitor. And parenteral is further divided in two categories, direct thrombin, indirect thrombin inhibitor and direct thrombin inhibitor. So you can see, so first oral, first oral we have taken and we have finished. You can see these are the oral one. These are the oral one. These are the three categories of the oral one. So see the mechanism of action. All the oral anticoagulants, all of them, all the oral anticoagulants, they are inhibiting certain coagulation factors which which coagulation factors now see coumarin derivative one by one we will see all three everyone first i will teach you the mechanism of action of coumarin then direct 10 inhibitor then direct 2 inhibitor so coumarin derivative inhibiting four factors 2 7 9 10 which four this is 2 this is 7 this is 9 and this is 10 these four are inhibited by coumarin derivative that is warfarin and that too indirectly the coumarin derivative that is warfarin it inhibit vitamin k epoxide reductase enzyme in the liver if this enzyme is inhibited vitamin k activation will not occur vitamin k will be inactive if vitamin k is inactive these four factors will not be activated so new synthesis of these four factors will not occur but it will not neutralize the already four of uh, these four factors present in the blood so the action is indirectly via vitamin K in the liver. This is the mechanism of action of coumarin derivatives. The second one are direct factor 10A inhibitors. Direct factor 10A inhibitors as the name indicate they are, in, they are inhibiting factor 10 only directly that too directly without the need of vitamin K. Direct factor 10A inhibitors and the next is direct factor 2 inhibitors direct thrombin inhibitors they are inhibiting factor 2 directly without the need of vitamin K. So this is the summary of oral anticoagulants. Oral, coumarin, direct factor 10A, direct 2A. The coumarin one is inhibiting four factors indirectly, 2, 7, 9, 10, 2, 7, 9, 10. That is indirectly via vitamin K. The 10A inhibitor inhibiting 10 and 2 inhibitor is inhibiting 2. And that is directly. These two are direct. So this is the summary. Coming on parenteral one. These are the parenteral anticoagulants. So we are having indirect, we are having direct. In the indirect, we are having three. Heparin, low molecular weight heparin and danaparide. So coming on one by one, heparin, heparin. What does heparin do? Heparin is inhibiting five factors. Which five? 12, 11, 9, 2 and 10. 12, 11, 9, 10 and 2. You can see these five and that is indirectly. Heparin activate antithrombin 3 and antithrombin 3 is inhibiting these five factors. It's an indirect inhibitor. Mainly it inhibits factor 2 but it inhibits all others. So this is the mechanism of action of heparin. Learn the five factors. Okay. Now the mechanism of action of low molecular weight heparin, it is inhibiting only two of them. That is 10 and 2, you can see. Only 10 and 2. And that too indirectly. Again, via antithrombin 3, it is inhibiting these two. Not directly. And the third is, you can see, uh, Fonda, Parinox and Danaporide. It is inhibiting only, it is inhibiting only 10. Okay. And again, via antithrombin 3. These three are indirect. Okay. The direct one, the direct one, agrab, uh, uh, agrobetan it is inhibiting only factor number two it is inhibiting only factor number two you can see direct inhibitors and that is directly without the need of antithrombin so this is the summary of parenteral one i told you the summary of the oral one you can see this is the summary of the parenteral one heparin is inhibiting these five factors you can see which five low molecular weight heparin is inhibiting only two of them the danaparide is inhibiting only one of them and direct thrombin inhibitor is inhibiting only factor number two directly. These three are indirect via antithrombin three and this one is direct. I hope done, 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 done. No confusion at all. If you know the mechanism of action, this is the table. You can appreciate. This is the table. You can appreciate these are the oral one and these are the parenteral one. The, the flow charts I have shown you. So this is the mechanism of action in short you have to learn. You have to learn the uses. You have to learn the side effects. This was the mechanism of action anyone have any confusion anyone have any confusion i will still continue people because if i leave it it will be left so i will still continue for another 30 minutes okay 15 minutes for this and 10 10 minutes for this okay so coming on the antiplatelet hello everyone i 
hope you found this concept clear and easy to understand if you had like to dive deeper into this topic and master it with full length lectures you can subscribe my app that is mad life by dr priyanka so join me for the live sessions where we break down the complex topics in a way that makes them simple and high yield for exams see you inside Thank you.